But the 7.1 quake that struck Southern California last night was so powerful, people here in the Bay Area felt it. It was the second major earthquake in that area in less than two days. It struck on the same fault as the July 4th 6.4, which is now considered a foreshock to yesterday's event. The second quake measured 11 times stronger than the first, but despite the intensity, no deaths have been reported, only minor injuries so far. This is a look at some of the worst damage in the San Bernardino. County of a uh, community of Trona. Chimneys and entire walls collapsed during the quake. Some roofs also caved in. Officials say as many as 50 structures in the small town were damaged by the quake. Governor Newsom has requested a presidential emergency declaration for Ridgecrest and the surrounding area. He toured the damage a short time ago. California is committed to rebuilding. Uh, California is committed uh, to this region, and California is committed. In closing, to do more to raise consciousness and awareness around the fact that our beauty, California's extraordinary beauty, is defined in many respects by seismology and by these quakes. The quake was so powerful, people here in the Bay Area felt it, especially up in high rises. The shaking triggered elevators to shut down at a condo complex in downtown San Jose. People there recorded video of light fixtures swaying, doors opening and shutting, and furniture shaking. They told us they felt more of a rocking sensation rather than a shake, and they said it lasted for what seemed like a couple of minutes. A construction worker was installing tile downtown when he felt the ground start to move. I was using the tile saw and it felt like the tile saw was going to tip over and where I went to my partner and I was like, did you feel that? It wasn't shaky. It was more like a rolling feeling, kind of like uh, on a boat or something like that. Very scary, right? And it makes us wonder, you know, here in Northern California, right, if it's going to trigger something here. Well, 300 miles north of where it all happened, we've got our own looming problems. The biggest natural disaster threat facing everybody in the Bay Area is a big shake on the Hayward Fault. That fault springs to life behind Fremont. It continues into San Pablo Bay. And at any time, it could trigger a quake that would easily be bigger than the two quakes that just hammered the Southland. One of the scenarios we think is very credible is that an earthquake actually starts in San Pablo Bay and ruptures in two different directions. And how big a magnitude would that be if you had to both go at once? Uh, 7.2 to 7.3. We really haven't had an earthquake of that size in a modern American city. The Hayward Fault is really the most highly populated fault in the United States. And for its 35 mile length, the fault slices directly through hundreds of East Bay homes and businesses and has been building up strain since the last time it really popped 150 years ago in 1868. The average time between big quakes on the Hayward, about 150 years. A very general average. So imagine cell towers out, water lines down, electricity gone for three days, and you unable to contact your kids. It's a good idea to plan for that kind of scenario and more now. Jules? Well, our Jackie Ward is near the Hayward Fault, and she is live on Grizzly Peak in Berkeley. And Jackie, you spoke with a geophysicist today, so what did he have to say? Well, he said this is a really good reminder for those of us who live in the Bay Area to get ready for whenever that next big one hits. He also explained the relationship between the fault line I'm standing on now, the Hayward line, and the fault line to our south. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Geophysicist Ola Caven says shaking like this may last for the next few days, and he wouldn't be surprised to see more large magnitude activity in the fours and fives, which he explains is quite normal for that area. Uh, this, however, is far enough from the San Andreas that we don't expect any interaction between faults in our area. Geophysicists in the Bay Area say they haven't seen anything out of the norm here, nothing over magnitude 3 or what they would consider significant. And if you're wondering what the next big one may feel like, the Ridgecrest fault orientation is a lot like what we have in the Bay Area. The depth of the earthquake is more or less what we would expect in the Bay Area. So the shaking that was felt locally in the Ridgecrest area is very similar what we would feel in the event of a San Andreas 
Hayward or Calaveras type event of this magnitude. Earthquake experts say there's about a 3% chance of a larger earthquake happening from now over the next couple of days, and the likelihood will continue to decrease as time passes. We're really on the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The San Andreas is sort of the main player in accommodating the deformation between the two, but there are other zones across California and even Nevada that take up some of that relative motion between those two plates. So the bottom line is that everything here in the Bay Area has remained normal, but we can expect the same kind of motion that they're experiencing down south to possibly happen here in the Bay in Berkeley. Jackie Ward, KPIX 5. Thank you, Jackie. And we will have a live report from Ridgecrest later in this newscast. We'll also continually be updating the situation on KPIX.com. On the website, you will also find disaster preparedness tips, including what you should have packed and ready to go in your earthquake kit. You don't have one? Well, there's no time like the present.